Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with quadratic equations. So what we have to do is we have to find the dimensions of each rectangle over here. So three different scenarios dealing with a rectangle, just wanted to throw different things at you so you know how to adjust accordingly. So in part A, we're told the width is five centimeters less than the length and that the area is 750 centimeters squared. Part B, we're told the perimeter is 44 centimeters and the area is 112 centimeters squared. And then in part C, the length is three centimeters less than twice the width and the area is 120 centimeters squared. So these are all different rectangles over here. Now I'm going to erase part C here just to give myself some room to work. I'll bring it back later in the video. So let's start off with diagrams actually for these scenarios. And in part A, this one's pretty simple. We're told the width right here is five centimeters less than the length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the length be x like that. And then the width, if it's five centimeters less than the length, well, the width is then going to be x minus five. Okay. And then we're told that the area is equal to 750 centimeters squared. So notice area for a rectangle in general, it's just length times width. Well, now we could just plug in everything, the area 750, the length is x, and then the width is x minus five. And now notice we have an equation to solve in terms of one variable. So what we could do is uh, expand this side. we got the 750 on this side. Bring the 750 over. So we'd end up with zero equals x squared minus five x minus 750 like that. And then from here, there's different ways to solve this. Now, because you're dealing with a large number here, the negative 750, it might be worth it for you to just take these parameters and throw it in the quadratic formula. This here actually does factor smoothly if you want to go down that route. So this would uh, factor. So two numbers that multiply to negative 750 and add up to negative five, it would be uh, negative 30 and positive 25. So we'd have x minus 30, and then we'd have x plus 25, like that, right? So you can here, from here, figure out, okay, when does x minus 30 equal 0? When does x plus 25 equal 0? So this is going to happen when x is 30. This is going to happen when x is negative 25. Now, remember, x represents the length of a rectangle, and so this here is not an admissible solution for the word problem. So x would end up being 30. So we'd have 30 centimeters. And then the width is five centimeters less than that. So it'd be 25 centimeters. And notice that 30 times 25 does indeed give us 750. All right. So on a test, because you're dealing with a large number here, it sometimes it might take you a while to get those factors. And sometimes it won't even factor. We're going to see actually in part C, the, uh, the answers are going to be in decimals. So sometimes it's worth it to take that extra time to just throw it in a quadratic formula just to see what you're aiming for. And then even if you do have to do with factoring, you could put in the quadratic formula initially just to see what the actual factors would be or what the solutions would be. And then you could take the solutions and turn them into factors. So whichever way you want to solve it at this point, that's up to you. The more important thing is setting up the equation properly. Because once we set up the equation properly, we've done tons of examples of where we solve different equations, whether with integers like this or decimals or fractions, whatever. The important part is setting it up like that. Okay, so that's part A. Now in part B, what are we told here? We're told, we're given some different information. We're told that the perimeter is 44 centimeters and the area is 112 centimeters squared. So this one's a little different. In this case, I'm actually going to introduce two variables because notice in part B, we're not told how the length and the width relate, but we're told that the perimeter is 44 centimeters. So what we can do is we can let X equal the length. I'll let Y equal the width. And so this would be X, this would be Y, this would be y, this would be x over here. And now with all of these, if you add all these, x plus x would give us 2x, y plus y would give us 2y. And notice that that's the perimeter that has to equal 
44 like that. And then we're also told the area, and we know the area, again, it's length times width. So in this case, it's actually gonna be the length, which is x, times the width, which is y, uh, and then let's plug in the area of 112 here. And so now notice here in this equation, problem is we got two variables, so we can't solve it yet. But notice here, we have another equation relating the x and the y. And so we have two equations, two unknowns, and so we can solve it with substitution or elimination. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna isolate for, you could isolate for either or, I'll isolate for the y. So first thing we could actually do is divide everything by two at this point. So we'll have uh, x plus y equals 22. And then let's isolate for the y, so bring the x over, so we'll have uh, y equals 22 minus x, like that. And then I'm gonna take this and plug it in for the y value. And so notice now we'll have 112 equals x times 22. And so notice at this point we have one equation for with one variable instead of two variables. So we have to do a little extra work in this particular scenario with part B, because again, we weren't explicitly told how the width and the length relate like directly. We were kind of indirectly told through the perimeter. So we had to do a little bit of extra work. Once you're told how the width and the length relate directly in the question, like in part A, also in part C, like we'll see, then we can uh, just bring in one variable and then make the length and the width in terms of that one variable. But in this case, the perimeter, we have to do a little bit of extra work here, okay? So once you get it in this format, uh, and then you just solve. So we'll have uh, 112 equals 22x minus x squared. I'm gonna bring everything over to the, um, to the left side to make the x squared positive. So we'll have x squared minus 22x minus, or positive 112 is equal to zero, like that, right? Just brought all these over to the left side, change the signs. And then again, you could throw it in the quadratic formula if you want. This actually factors smoothly into x minus 14, x minus eight, like that. Okay, so notice in this case, there's actually two solutions. So x can equal eight or x can equal 14, like that. Now remember, x is the, um, x is the length. So let me show you what happens here. So remember y, I erased it, but y is equal to 22 minus x. So what we could do to solve for the y in each of these cases is we could plug in this eight for the x, 22 minus eight would give us 14, or we plug in the 14 for x, 22 minus 14 would give us eight. So these are the two different rectangles right there, but notice they're actually the same, right? It's just interchange. In this case, the, uh, the width is larger than the length, and in this case, the width is smaller than the length. Okay, but it's actually the same rectangle. That's why we got those two solutions right there. So the dimensions of this rectangle from both of those solutions is gonna be 14 centimeters by eight centimeters like that. Because even though in the diagram we let x equal the length and then y is equal to the width, the equation doesn't know that. And so it's gonna spit out both of these solutions and just interchange them because you're just dealing with abstract variables over here. But it does end up just being the same rectangle with dimensions of 14 centimeters by eight centimeters. So there's only one solution, even though we got two solutions for X over here. But again, it's like, yeah, anyway. Hope you get what I'm saying. It's basically the same rectangle here. It's the same numbers, it's the same dimensions, and that's what they're asking for, right? So those are the dimensions. And then notice also if we add these up, so if we have a length of 14 centimeters and a width of eight, 14 plus 14, 28, plus eight plus eight, so 28 plus 16 would indeed give us that perimeter of 44 centimeters. And then 14 times eight for the area would give us that 112.
And then finally moving on to part C, so the length is three centimeters less than twice the width and the area is 120 centimeters squared. So again, let's draw a rectangle. Now notice in this case, just like part A here, the length and the width, we're directly relating them in the question. And so what I would recommend is just using one variable right away. So we're told the length is three centimeters less than twice the width. So in my opinion, what's best to do is let X equal the width because notice the length is described in terms of the width. Okay, so we'll let X equal the width in this case before we were told in part A that the width was five centimeters less than the length, right? So the width was described in terms of the length. So we let in the previous or in part A, we let length the uh, length be x. And then we create an expression for the width. Well, in this case, the length is described in terms of the width. And so we let x equal the width. So just take a note of that distinction right there. While why I'm letting x equal the width in this case and why in part A, I let x equal the length. So if we let x be the width in this case, the length is three centimeters less than twice the width. So if we take the width, multiply it by two, three less than that is gonna be the length like that, right? And then we just throw it into that area formula, length times width, so that means 120, the area is going to be the width and the length multiplied like that, right? And so from here, again, we have an equation in terms of one variable. So expanding everything here, we would end up with 2x squared minus 3x, 120, bring the 120 over. We'll have 2x squared minus 3x minus 120. Like that. So we end up with a quadratic equation. In this particular case, this is not going to factor smoothly. There's no two numbers or no two integers rather that multiply to two times negative 120, negative 240, and then add up to negative three, right? So in this case, we'll have to throw it in the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So notice that the B value is negative three, so when we plug it in here, negative, negative three, plus or minus B squared, so it'll be negative three squared minus four times the A value of two times the C value of negative 120. And then that's gonna be all over two times that A value of two, like that. So that's how we set it up. Let's uh, do it here. So three plus or minus, this would be nine. Um, what would we get here? So we would get uh, negative eight times negative 120. That would give us what? Positive uh, 960, like that. And then that's gonna be all over four. And so up here, we would end up with three plus or minus the square root of 969. And then that's gonna be all over Four. And when you do those calculations, you're going to get two solutions. So X can either be 8.53 or negative 7.03, but we would ignore the negative solution because we're dealing with a word problem, right? Width can't be negative. So we end up with 8.53 centimeters for the width. And then the, um, the length would be two times 8.53 minus three you just plug it back in here and you would end up with 14.06 uh, centimeters like that for the length. So this is the width, that's the length. Those are the dimensions for the rectangle in part C. So in this particular case, just an example of where this didn't factor. So we had to throw it in the quadratic formula in order to get those decimal values, right? So sometimes that's gonna happen as well. Uh, it's not gonna factor smoothly. Sometimes these answers can be in decimals.